The principles of marketing, communications, and public relations are not just for promoting commercial interests. The same tools we use to connect with our target audiences for business ends can also be used for advancing social causes and the greater public good as well. For instance, there was once a massive outbreak of influenza, and children especially were catching and spreading the disease, as children do. The U.S. Center for Disease Control knew the best way to stem the spread of the influenza was to encourage children to wash their hands. But it takes a bit of scrubbing to get the job done right, not simply getting their hands wet with a quick rub of soap, as also children do. So the social planners picked a song that children the world over know well and love to sing, and that song was Happy Birthday to You. And the children were instructed to sing the song twice while washing. And that was long enough to get their hands clean and help stem the spread of the disease. One of the designers of the campaign says he's especially proud of its success and how pleased he is to see that sometimes grown adults, even years later, are still humming happy birthday as they wash their hands. All the communication principles we've covered earlier are also applicable to social projects. But when we get into challenges of promoting social, nonprofit, and philanthropic programs, there are four additional P's we need to consider as well. And the first P stands for publics. And that means who are your constituents, your stakeholders? anybody impacted by your actions, not just your direct customers. And the next P is partnerships, meaning who can you work with to advance your ends? And then policy, or what should the government do about a problem? And finally, purse strings, or who provides the funding and dictates how it gets spent? Let's look at an example of these four P's in play. Let's say you are designing a public education campaign on the benefits of exercise. So let's identify the components of the four social marketing P's as they might apply to that health-related campaign. Who are the publics related to a public information campaign on exercise? Well, of course, one would be the direct target audience that we want to see exercising more. In this case, we'll focus on middle-aged men and women. We can't afford to target everyone. Another public might be the direct target's relatives, their spouses, children, parents, who will encourage them to listen to the message of please exercise more for healthier life. Other possible publics for an exercise campaign include the target's friends and co-workers and health care providers, public service directors at TV and radio stations who might provide some free airplay of announcements for you, local reporters who might do stories, local government officials who might speak on your behalf, board members who might help spread the word using their authority in the community and the organization staff and volunteers who are going to help you get the job done. Who might be suitable partners for a social marketing campaign working to encourage more exercise? On social programs, we typically don't have the competitors fighting for a share of the marketplace, but rather partners all trying to accomplish a common goal. For example, we can partner with health clubs who might financially benefit from the exercise program, or clothing and shoe stores who might partner with promotional giveaways and sponsorships, or restaurants who might want to be associated with healthy eating, or TV and radio stations who need to provide a certain amount of free airtime for the public good, and local employers who have a vested interest in healthy employees and service organizations such as the JCs, Lions, Kiwanis, Rotary, who contribute time to worthwhile community projects. 
and grocery stores and drug stores and local and state health departments and volunteer organizations such as the American Heart Association. These might all be ready and valuable partners for your campaign encouraging more exercise. The next exercise campaign question to answer is what kinds of public policy might be addressed through public outreach? What would we like to see our governmental bodies do? The city and county could help to develop safe walking and biking paths. Large government employers could provide flex time at work so employees could take midday or early morning exercise breaks. They could provide employee incentives to walk or bike to work, such as providing showers. Government agencies could offer support for installation of bike racks in the community and any number of other provisions that an engaged group of citizens might encourage their government officials to try. And also importantly, who holds the purse strings or who is going to fund our worthwhile project? And frequently, we need to find funding sources apart from a direct target audience. Quite often, our target may be low income and unable to pay for the services they receive. So, for funding our exercise program, we might turn to health organizations and seek federal and state grants or request funding from local and national foundations. We can seek corporate sponsors such as Nike or Reebok. And we can possibly offer sales of products emblazoned with exercise-related company logos on t-shirts and sweatshirts. So for social marketing, we bring these additional considerations of publics and partnerships, policy and purse strings into the skill set and toolbox we've already developed as communication professionals. And thus, we may find ourselves more successful with the social projects we undertake, helping to serve the greater public good.